channel has around 2000 videos and each one of them has explanation i've just not you know spent time on solving the problem you know i can solve a problem in two sentences but it doesn't help you you know my purpose is to impact 1 million student help me do that spread a word about this channel where good explanation is available and you will not find this in on any website you can find a solution but nobody will give you a clue as to what they have done and the quality of quality of solutions which are available which i'm seeing is so pathetic that you will find this to be refreshingly good and top quality so subscribe to my channel for excellent explanations thank you very much for your time good morning and welcome to this uh, solution and explanation of the case study that i have picked from cbsc 2022 uh, two three paper so you can see this is what i am doing and this is a case study on optical instruments very useful case study uh, on uh, microscope so let's read the question first and try to solve this all right so it says that there are a number of optical devices that have been devised so periscope right this is used in submarines binocular microscope and telescope so a lot of optical instruments have been created they use reflecting and refracting properties of mirror lens and prism right most of them are in common use that is correct our knowledge about the formation of image by the mirrors and lens is the basic requirement for understanding the working of these devices which is true you know unless we understand how the image gets created you know we really won't understand how the working of these devices happen so what are the questions based on this case study question number one is the why the image formed at infinity is often considered most suitable for viewing all right so see in optical instruments if you talk about optical instruments right optical instruments if we talk about it i'm doing the first one so i'm answering the first one right now the optical instruments right now when you use optical instrument finally what is that is used to uh, view the optic the, the final image you know i right so i i sees the final image right the final image that is created by the optical instrument we know this right and i will tell you why i mentioned the eye because it says you know why why the image formed at infant is the most suitable for viewing who views the viewing is done by the eye right when i say uh, sees i mean view I views the final image that is created by the optical instrument. Now, if you talk about uh, there are you know viewing of an image, there are c three situations. One, the image is created between the eye, which is a retina. I am talking about the gap. Okay, so you your the image is created between the near point, near point is 25 centimeter right 25 centimeter to retina right this is a gap so if if this is your near point and this is your eye right this is your eye and you have a retina behind the eye the distance is 25 centimeters right so i'm talking about first situation the image gets created in a, at a distance which is less than the so this is your eye I is also a small optical instrument. Okay. I'm giving you a detailed explanation which you will find nowhere. Please watch my video on angular magnification also to understand these concepts in detail. So this is your near point, right? This is your near point. The problem with this is if the image gets created too close to the eye, which is between 0 and 25, where 0 is the uh, starting point which is this right and this is your near point right 25 centimeter you 
the problem that happens is you can't focus you can't see the image clearly so the eye has to focus a lot right if you're a young person like 12 years 13 years you may be able to focus but how long can you focus right it's very strenuous to uh, see an image which is very close to your eye so you can do this at your home you bring your newspaper very close to your eye try and focus after some time your eyes will get strained and tired right and focus will be very poor so uh, in this situation the focus is very poor focus is very poor focus is very poor and you really cannot see the image clearly a lot of strain right so this situation of trying to create a an image between the retina of the eye and the near point is not acceptable this doesn't work okay the second situation can be a lot of people believe this to be the correct way that create the image you know create the image when i say create the image i mean you can use a microscope a telescope to create image at multiple places let's say the optical instruments you're using you know create the image at near point okay at the near point so near point a lot of people think this is a very nice place to be but mind you this is also not a very nice place because when you use a microscope let's talk about microscope specifically because the question is on microscope and generally optical instruments if you create the image at the near point where the finally the distance is 25 centimeter what will happen is the eye will have a lot of strain and headache you will get headaches if you're using a microscope for creating the final image at 25 centimeter your eye will suffer from eye will suffer from eye strain and headache right so even at a near point though the focus is good okay at the near point the focus will be good in the first situation focus was very bad strain was also there if you so what you do you get the image created at the near point the focus is good but the eye will still have a lot of strain you will feel a lot of strain and this could be for telescope microscope everything the situation number three always is use these optical instruments to create okay to create image at infinity okay now when you create the final image at infinity using a telescope microscope or whichever instrument optical instrument what you will find is that your eye is very relaxed okay you will not get a headache so in this case no headache no headache and no eye strain and therefore the first question why the image formed at infinity is considered most suitable because at infinity the eye is very relaxed and you will get no headaches and no eye strain you don't have to put any effort to view the image the eye is built in a way that i mean it's a god gift that it is capable of seeing the final image at infinity with most relaxation a lot of people think even you know the near point is also a place of relaxation it is but finally you will get a headache it is not that relaxed the highest relaxation comes at infinity okay now let's go to the second part of the question which which is dealing with let's read it in modern microscope multi component lenses are used for both objective and eyepiece why the lot of students would not know what is a multiple multi component so i'm doing the second one okay and this keyword to note here is the multi component lenses okay so these are used in a microscope the modern microscopes are using multi component lenses now the study you have done so far in your class 12th is that a microscope you know a compound microscope microscope 
has what an eyepiece and eyepiece and then what it has is a an objective okay an objective okay the objective is very close to the slit right this where is the sorry not the slit the slide on which the sample is kept right and the eyepiece is where you keep your eyes right so you keep your uh, biology slide very close to the objective and the other end you know of the tube is the eyepiece go and study about the construction of a microscope it's very very important but anyway now what now this is the impression you have that you use two convex lenses this is a convex lens and this too is a convex lens is a convex lens which is good i mean the early microscopes definitely you know were made up of convex two convex lenses but there was a problem in these in practical life and the problem was there is something called as a problem number 1 which is called as a spherical aberration spherical aberration the second problem you have is something called as a, a chromatic aberration okay so the what what people who were using the compound microscope were facing were two problems so problem number was spherical aberration why does what is spherical aberration and and what is the consequence of these to the consequence was that the image quality was very poor now if you look into this problem and this problem both resulted in a poor quality image in order to correct this spherical aberration and chromatic aberration what the physicist or the scientist or the manufacturers did was they started using different type of lenses along with the convex lenses right so so in a in, see what is the spherical aberration let's understand that i will not get into details but you broadly will be able to understand what are spherical so spherical aberration is what happens is if you see this lens and you have an image the the when the rays go at the periphery periphery means corner periphery okay they bend like this so they go to the periphery okay and they bend here where is the image which are close to the center of the uh, lens for example this image right it converges somewhere else okay so the so all the rays which are close to the center of the lens converge here and those which are close to the periphery you know for example this is a periphery this is also periphery so if i draw a ray you know it converges here so you can see this is image number 1 and this is image number 2 so this is called as a longitudinal type of or horizontal type of spherical aberration so so you don't see one image you see multiple image because at the periphery the bending of the light is very high okay so you get multiple images right so multiple images get created so the person who is seeing the image does not see one image but multiple images this is called as a spherical aberration that happens due to periphery you know this is a periphery the corner point does a different type of bending right so refraction happens in a way that uh, the bending changes at different places in the lens if you're close to the center it's proper but if it is away from the center towards the periphery the bending happens in a different manner so let's talk about chromatic aberration now the chromatic aberration is also going to result in problem that the image quality will be very clear so when you have a white light which is coming the white light will get split again because of refraction okay because of refraction the white light gets split in multiple colors so what you see multiple images okay and this is the white light so let's label this as white light right so the light gets dispersed it gets broken into multiple wavelengths and therefore you see multiple images you know each one of them is of different color different color so if you have studied about a prism you would know that whenever a light passes through that dispersive uh, prism 
you know the the light bends and then it spreads into multiple wavelengths right this is the way it gets split so similarly something like this happens that this may be red okay so this may be violet and this may be indigo etc right so light splits into multiple parts and so chromatic abrasion is when you see multiple images image number one two three multiple images of different colors are getting created because of the refraction or dispersion of white light so this is white light which is going and the white light is getting split into multiple colors i hope this is making sense so far what i have told you that students have an impression that the lens has you know a microscope has a compound microscope has two lenses convex lens con one convex lens two and there is some high uh, focal length and low focal length and stuff like that and that is what it is all about you know a compound microscope it is not true a compound microscope was not useful the scientist found that it had two problems the problem number one is abrasion the second problem is chromatic abrasion the first one is spherical abrasion now what happens now scientists found a way to solve this problem okay they found a way to solve this problem okay so how did they solve this problem what they did in the case of spherical abrasion was they brought in something called as a meniscus meniscus lens and a hemispherical lens hemispherical and I, you don't have to really you know get into details of the ray diagram and all of that just for your knowledge lens and what they did was they kept this lens these two lenses close to the objective okay what happened because of that when you use so what what are we trying to do we are trying to solve the problem of spherical abrasion by introducing additional lenses over and above the convex lens so convex lens is not enough so you have this impression that a convex like lens is what you need no you need additional lenses additional lenses were used additional lenses were used to solve the problem right so they used a meniscus lens a hemispherical lens along with the convex lens when multiple lenses get used to solve a problem it becomes a multi component system multi component system okay and if you read this question there is a word in this question that the modern lenses are multiple component lenses why the modern systems are multiple component systems because they use you know lenses which are over and above a convex lens to solve the problems of spherical abrasion and chromatic abrasion this is the answer right now we have only understood the spherical abrasion now let me go to the chromatic abrasion now chromatic abrasion the way scientists solve this was they use something called as a chromatic lenses a chromatic lenses okay so what they did was they picked up the lens and what they did was they connected it to the uh, uh so this is a so so how do you build a achromatic lens you can have an achromatic lens where you have you know additional lens connected to the convex lens it can be a concave lens which is most popular so what you do you pick a concave lens and you connect it to the uh, convex lens which is this lens okay so for an eyepiece as well as the objective don't use convex lens what you what you use instead instead is a achromatic lens there are multiple types of achromatic lenses which are uh, you know beyond your courses but i'm just giving you a glimpse as to how the achromatic lens can be used so let's look into this lens okay this is a lens this is an achromatic lens because some part of it is a so this is your convex lens okay and what you have done is you have added a concave lens alongside so this becomes an achromatic lens a chromatic lens this type of lens will solve the problem of dispersion of light so if you remember in a prism you have two prism system one kept like this the other as an inverted 
prism and therefore the white light that en enters that finally gets dispersed then it passes through the second prism again a white light emerges right so all the dispersion which happens gets cancelled so the concave lens also cancels the the dispersion effect which you see here right the splitting of the white light into seven color so the cancellation is done so if you see even a you know the lenses uh, have to be corrected for chromatic abrasion so a lot of corrections happen so a simple convex lens and a con con two convex lens system is not sufficient for creating a nice compound microscope nowadays in a modern microscope which is a multiple type multiple component multi component lens you are using additional lenses to solve these problems so i hope you it is clear in your mind that spherical abrasion has to be corrected chromatic abrasion has to be corrected you introduce new types of lenses within the microscope right meniscus lens hemispherical lens achromatic lens to solve the respective abrasion problem and then the final image which the user is able to see is a good quality image otherwise it's a very bad quality so therefore the modern uh, lenses are multi component it is not just two lens there are multiple components of the lenses which are getting used now to solve the problem of spherical abrasion and chromatic abrasion now let's go to the part 3 which deals with the i think it's a part 3 is a more simple one which is dealing with write the two points of differences between a compound microscope and a astronomical telescope i think we will just do this right away the difference between the compound microscope okay so on the left hand side uh, let's write the word compound micro micro scope and on the right hand side let's write the word uh, astronomical telescope right so astro astronomical telescope obviously i think this would be known to you you can memorize this but i will yet do it for the sake of completing it so just stay forward if you go to my playlist of optical instruments you will find some fantastic concepts given in one minute to help you memorize the basics which you know all the entrance examination or board examinations are asking all you need to do is to go to all the playlist you see those one minute video they're fantastic because they actually pick up the basics which are being asked in the case studies very useful for those who are interested in you know uh, answering the case studies okay let's start now with answering this question of the difference between a compound microscope and a astronomical telescope thank you very much uh, let's meet in a while
Right, so let's talk about the first difference, okay? See, when we talk about uh, the compound microscope, objective focal length is very important. It is short or you can say it is uh, small, okay? So the short focal length of objective is used to create a large real image, large real image. Whereas in the case of the objective of a telescope, okay, objective of a telescope, the focal length is very large. The focal length is very large, okay. Even this is used to create a large uh, real image. And in the case of, so, so this is a difference number one, the focal length of the objective Okay, the focal length of the objective is the first thing you have to focus on. And I will tell you the way to memorize this. The way to memorize this is, is that eyepiece for both of them, you know, the eyepiece for a compound microscope and eyepiece for uh, an astronomical telescope, telescope behave in the same manner. Both are used as magnifying glasses. Okay, both are used as a magnifying glass, right? So you don't have to worry about eyepiece uh, in the case of a telescope and a microscope because they do the same job. The difference lies in the objective focal length. Okay. The second difference and, and my suggestion is you can go to any book you study NCRT. You can memorize the differences. I'm just telling you something which is more than what is available in the books. Construction point of view, a compound microscope, you know, needs a lot of light. So you, you would see, right, that oil immersion, uh, you know, bulb available beneath the stage. A stage is where, you know, you keep the slide. So needs a lot of light, a lot of illumination, a lot of light, because you want to see that sl uh, slide which has the bacteria. So you have that concept of uh, light coming in numerical aperture. You can go and watch my videos on microscope where you can understand you know, what is the oil uh, which is used in compound microscopes? What is numerical aperture? But the point is that construction wise, a compound microscope is built and needs a lot of light. But if you talk about astronomical telescope, see, they, they depend more on natural lights. Natural light, right? This is the way they work. So construction difference is also there. Again, I'm telling you, you can go to your book or any other article which you find good, you can memorize the differences. I'm telling you uh, something important and helpful so that you're able to answer this question or gain extra knowledge, okay? There are many books available where you have these differences. But look at the, you know, the, the way to memorize this is the eyepiece is common, okay? So therefore, don't concentrate on eyepiece. Just focus on the objective focal length to create the, you know, a large real image of an object which is very close okay so so in this case if you if you see the object object is very close to objective and here the object is very far from objective lens Obviously, stars and uh, moon and all that is so far from the objective lens. So, broadly, uh, these uh, are the you know good good to know differences between a compound microscope and astronomical telescope. You can go and study from your book. My 